But uh, what got me thinking about it from the beginning was my wife, our pastor, had had asked us, uh, who in the Bible do you uh, best uh, uh, resonate with? And we all and we all went around and we said, you know, Peter, Paul, we oh. said, right. We all said we I mean, <laughs> it was about three of us. that was like Paul, you know, <laughs> and, and we all said a name. And so then when it got to my wife, my wife was like, I don't think this person even has a name. And um, mm. yeah, and so she said the woman that was uh, sick with the with the bleeding for 12 years and all she knew. All she knew was uh, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. She had to. Don't see though what that heat though. Tell me that you never leave, that you never let me go in the desert, stranded out in the cold. I'm never alone with you. I'm never alone. I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone Tell me that you never leave, that you never let me go In the desert, we're stranded out in the cold I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone Sit on thoughts, let the cold nights Regretful sights, fed my appetite Mind racing, lust chasing Felt caged in with no patience Running and jumping, but I ain't playing hoops I'm just stuck in a loop, but sending what to do Turning you, but I'm feeling like you want the truth I love my skin, love my flesh, I can turn them loose Incognito on the tab, how you seeing through? My perversions in that bed, dead through this head Turn away while I'm hitting dab after dab Drink my soul away, all alone in the cab But that was you sitting in that driver's seat You never lived, I was just running on the creek In conviction, I can feel you pulling close to me Ain't no guilt, I'm just trying to share the vision Tell me that you never leave, that you never let me go in the desert, stranded out in the cold. I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone. I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone. Tell me that you never leave, that you never let me go. In the desert, we're stranded out in the cold. I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone. I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone. I turn away feeling I can do it by myself. Who need help, I can pick up and go myself. Getting well from my own way. I keep the flow on go, I can't stop yet. A little ditty with the 50, I won't stop, yes. Many men tried to get me like a conquest. It was God that reached me when I ain't have hell. He the shepherd, I'm the sheep, so I know I'm blessed. Even though I walk through the valley, valley. even if the odds stack against me, me. your rod and staff, they come from me. I can't believe that you will never leave me alone. Even though I walk through the valley, valley. even if the odds stack against me, That you never leave, that you never let me go In the desert, stranded out in the cold I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone Tell me that you never leave, that you never let me go In the desert, we're stranded out in the cold I'm never alone with you, I'm never alone I'm never alone with you Man, and as we move into this next section, into this segue I love to hear testimony and so do our listeners Talk to us about the transition of unsaved just might to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All right. So my testimony, I don't even know where to start. You know, uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with, with, with where I know the Lord wants me to start. So, uh, 20, 2019, 2020, the pandemic, I mean, before it is, me and my wife, we, you know, we had some, we, we, we believed God, but we didn't, we didn't live for God. And, you know, hmm. we, did, we didn't feel that God was calling us like how, like how he calls us now. Uh, 2019, 2020, the whole pandemic, you know, I feel like God had called a lot of us through, through that pandemic. I feel like God was really revealing himself and, I found out, you know, if he's revealing himself, he revealed himself just like, just like what's in the word, just like what Jesus said in Matthew 24. But, um, so, you know, we, um, we, we in our little one bedroom apartment, you know, in Cleveland Heights and, uh, we ain't going to work. We just getting high every day, you know, 
uh, drinking every, you know, me, me personally, me and my wife don't drink or she really don't drink now, but she didn't drink like that back then. But uh, just getting high, drinking every day. And the reason we was doing it was because we were scared. Like, I ain't going to sugarcoat it, try to lie to you. You know, we were scared. Just like, for real. And not just scared of because of the neighborhood that we was in. And um, we didn't know, like, what was going on. We were scared because we knew that we was apart from God. We knew, you know, mm. we, we were scared because something wasn't right in the world and something wasn't right within us and, and we was not helping it the, the 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 beer and the liquor was not helping it so um i don't know I, I i don't know who said it or where it began or how it began but it was just like let's read the bible so we started reading the bible with a blunt in our hand and we had no idea what it was saying. <laughs> mm. And we had no idea what was going on. And so uh, we found these videos on YouTube called The History of Religion. And so this uh, YouTube page uh, was just going through, you know, religion. But he was breaking the Bible down and explaining um, uh, monothe- monotheism against polytheism mm-hmm. and explaining, you know, you know, the son of God versus, you know, and father God, the Holy Trinity. And, um, mm-hmm. and he was just explaining, you know, he was just diving in on, on stories that, that you, that you heard through your lifetime, but he was explaining like, you know, um, you know, just giving the backstory of it, you know, just, why Israel was in captivity and where in the Bible it, it, it shows that, you know, what brought them to captivity and everything like that. So that really, both of us really feel like the Lord gave us that tool at a time that he was calling us to him. And so, and so that's how it was started for us, man. We, um, you know, during the pandemic, you know, when, you know, what what used to be comfortable to us wasn't comfortable anymore and the only place we had to turn was was him you know and it was like you know how um you know we knocked and he opened the door or i mean or vice versa you know he was he was knocking and and our door was open and so uh from there we um you know he he just wasn't letting us go we tried to go back to normal you know, we mm-hmm. tried to go back to normal. Uh, we tried to go back to living for ourselves and living for the flesh. And um, God was just, he was just all around us and he was in us. And, and every time we prayed, we started seeing our prayers was being answered more and more and more. And um, so, you know, we started praying for like-minded people. We wasn't thinking about going to church, you know, or actually when we started thinking about going to church, we was going all around Cleveland Heights to the churches close to us. And all of them were still closed. All of mm. them. Yeah. Mm. And so this is, and so we, had, and we was breaking away from what we used to do and, and the people that was in our lives doing it with us, you know, mainly my family. You know, we mm-hmm. wasn't coming around to get high and play cards no more because we wanted to read and we wanted to pray. We wanted to be with the Lord, man. So, mm. you know, um, you know, so we started praying for like minded people uh, to come into our lives. And we started praying for, you know, that's what we started praying for. Like minded people to come into our lives because, you know, it would just be us and our little one bedroom apartment. And we we ain't getting high no more. Uh I'm rarely drinking, rarely drinking. I might have two beers watching the football mm-hmm. game. And for mm-hmm. me, that's that was like, wow. Like, God, you mm-hmm. are doing something. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, we started praying for like-minded people. And um, and so I got this new job. And that was, that was the answer prayer. Because what I prayed for, God delivered that exactly what I prayed for he de- it delivered it to me in the job exactly to the T mm. 
And then on top of that, the dude that was training me, I love, I love you, bro. If you watching this, you know I love you, dog. But so you know, with this job, man, uh, the guy that was training me, um, you know, he invited us to his to his church that was uh that was forty five minutes away from us, but he invited us to the church picnic. And so um, I was like, yeah, man, we would love to come. Thanks for inviting us, for sure. So we went to the church picnic and um, met the pastor, Pastor Silva. That's my, you know, he's my pastor today. And uh, got to talk to him. And when I was talking to him, he was just so honest and he was so real. And I and I said to him, and the thing I, that resonates the most with me is like, he was like saying to me and uh, my wife, he was saying like, well, why aren't y'all married? He was, you know, he dove into that right there and I respected mm. it. And so then I said to him, I was like, I guess you could say I'm still lukewarm. He was like, well, that's a that's a scary place to be because, you know, Jesus says he will chew you up and spit you out. And mm. he was just being honest. He wasn't sugarcoating nothing. And I appreciated that from him because, you know, a lot of people, you know, sugarcoat things. And I appreciate honesty. I appreciate realness. And so we started going to their church, man. And um, and yeah, we've been going ever since. And now we now we uh now we are greeters at the church, you know. They asked to be they asked us to be greeters at the church, you know, volunteer inside the church and stuff. And and um so yeah, I guess I mean that's my testimony, man. That's that's what happened. That's how God turned this around through that pandemic, you know. And I mean, it was it was such a time. It was such a strong. T- we both was having such a strong time with the Lord. Sometimes we look at each other and be like, "I wish we could go back to another pandemic." Because I mean, <laughs> that might and that, and that sound crazy, but it's like, man, God's presence was just so strong, and and just the time that the time that we had uh, through the pandemic when we had started opening up His Word, and everyday prayer, and it wasn't that. That that day to day life of just I'm gonna work, do these two three chores, and then I gotta go sleep. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. that it wasn't that quick prayer before you go to sleep. It wasn't that you know that quick you know just you know scripture ding on your phone. It was like we mm-hmm. was we was in the word. We was eating. You know, we was eating. And um, amen. Yeah, man, and it was, it was, I mean, it was, it, it changed, it changed our lives, man. It changed our lives to where now I'm get to be here and speak to you about it, you know? So, yeah. Amen. Man, I love hearing that too, because you hear the story, you see the stories on YouTube about how many people got saved during the pandemic, but this is the first opportunity I actually got to talk with somebody and we could see why the pandemic could really be heavy on people's mind because the uh, the disease that the Bible talk about coming through, sweeping the land and everything like that, right? Yeah. You know, um, but it's also amazing too that not only did you get saved, right? You and your wife, now you're actually serving in the church, right? In the church capacity because a lot of times people are going in the church after being saved and just sit there. And look, for the people that do it, I'm not mad at you. At least you're in the building, right? Right. But to be able to help and to serve is such a... People don't realize, which I've heard through this whole interview, that when we serve, I actually think it do us just as well as the person that we're serving, right? Um, Or giving to, right? You know, it does our hearts and well too, right? So, you know, I always get the opportunity, though, just Mike, Uh, to talk to that one person out there feeling like it's impossible to win. That one right there that's sitting on their couch with a blunt in their hand that feels ashamed to come in the presence of the Lord, right? I'm going to ask you, if you're talking to that person right now, what advice would you give them? I was, the advice I would give them is is just talk to God. You ain't got to stop doing nothing. He's I mean, really, he he's he's still right there for you, right there with you. He's like real talk. I had I had a I had a powerful I had a powerful thought, and then uh, a brother in, in the prison ministry he he uh, he confirmed it. So we all hear about the uh, the prisoners that was crucified 
uh, that was on the crosses next to Jesus. We all hear about them. So mm-hmm. one of them, you know, um, believed that Jesus was was the Son of Man, and the other mm-hmm. one didn't. The one, the one prisoner, we don't even know his name. Out of all the names in the Bible. You know, at all the stories, we don't know this guy's name. The only thing we know about him is he was a prisoner and he was crucified next to Jesus and he believed Jesus was the son of man. Here's the other thing, too. He ain't never prayed. We don't know. We don't know if he ever prayed. We don't know if he he more than likely he wasn't baptized. He he didn't mm. speak. He didn't speak in tongues. He, mm. he we don't know if he ever even took communion. If he, you know, we don't know if he did any traditional thing that the church says we have to do. The only thing we know about this prisoner that was crucified next to Jesus is he believed Jesus was the Son of God. That's it. And what did Jesus say to him? You will be in paradise with me. Mm -hmm. With Mm -hmm. me. So that's what I'll say to that cat. You (laughs) you ain't gotta, you ain't supposed to, we, we aren't supposed to go to God when we clean everything up. When we stop doing whatever you think you got to stop doing, we supposed to go to God when we are at our lowest. And I'm, while you sitting there smoking that blunt and you thinking and you just wondering if, if it's real, man, ask him if he's real, you know, if you having a hard time with porn and masturbation and all of that other stuff and you thinking, man, when I'm going to stop this, when am I going to quit? I don't even want to keep doing this, man. Take that to God, bro. For real. Take that to him and just, and just let him start. Let him begin to to um to give you the strength that you need so that you can surrender, you know. But if you can't admit that you that you weak, you know, um, and maybe this ain't for everybody, but some of us need to admit that 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 we weak, and that we mm-hmm. looking for the, and we looking for the strength that 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 he can only give us. You might, mm-hmm. might be strong as heck out here on these streets. You might mm-hmm. be that dude, but you know. Uh, our your flesh can be way stronger than you, way mm-hmm. stronger than you. So that's what I mean by weak. You know, mm-hmm. weak, weak to that to that fleshly need, that fleshly desire that we all that we all want sometimes. So yeah, that's what I would say to you, man. And just know, like, yeah, we all been there. Like I said there earlier, everybody know everybody that sold dope, <laughs> ran with a gang, pimped some girls in, snorted a little a coke. Little coke. <laughs> yeah, man. That that yes, sir. that don't define that don't define who God is and who God is with you. So, you know, remember think of that prisoner that that all he did was believe Jesus was the was the son of God. That he just believed Jesus. That the man dying, being crucified next to him, was the only person that can save him. And Jesus told him, you'll be in paradise with me. So, you know. Yes, sir. Man, that's so good, man. You could preach that too, man. As a matter of fact, I took out my notebook, started taking some notes because I had never, <laughs> I had never actually, I mean, I, I'm not going to say I may not have thought of that. But, you know, it's a lot of people that get tripped up by traditions. Yeah. And I think that message is for not only for the one out there that is on the verge for accepting Jesus Christ as their life, right? But that's also out there for the body and for the church and the ones that's already accepted yeah. Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So, man, that was a great message, man. And man, I, I, I gotta appreciate give, you sharing. I got to give credit to my wife also on that. Uh, let me let me give you a little bit more of the story. So Okay. I thought of that, you know, like I'm a truck driver, you know, that's what mm-hmm. I do. So a lot of times I'm riding, I'm thinking about the word, I'm I'm listening to a sermon. But I, I was thinking about that, um, about that prisoner because we don't know his name. And then the confirmation was uh my prison ministry uh brother Rich, he put he put a meme up that said the same thing that I was that I was thinking the day before. <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm gonna send. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to okay. you. But uh, 
what got me thinking about it from the beginning was my wife, our pastor had had asked us, uh, who in the Bible do you uh, best uh, uh, resonate with? And we all and we all went around and we said, you know, Peter, Paul, we oh. said, right. We all said we I mean, <laughs> it was about three of us. I was like, Paul, you know, <laughs> and, and we all said a name. And so then when it got to my wife, my wife was like, I don't think this person even has a name. And um, mm. yeah, and so she said the woman that was uh, sick with the with the bleeding for 12 years and all she knew, all she knew was uh, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. She had just that amount, that much amount of faith to where, you know, and I mean, at this point, we all, a lot of us don't watch Chosen too, but you know, mm-hmm. that's something, but my wife was like, all she knew that she just needed to touch, you know, the, the hem of his garment. And uh, we don't know her name. We don't know what type of person that she was, what type of, what she did, if she was a sinful person or not. We just know she was sick. She wanted to be healed. And she knew that the hem of his garment was going to heal her. So my wife was like, sometimes, uh, a lot of times, that's who she feel like she is. And so, you know, I mean, Mm. I thought that that was a powerful, I think my wife say some some powerful stuff sometimes and don't even recognize it. So that's what had got me thinking about that prisoner and that we don't know his name. We don't know nothing about him except he was a prisoner. That's it, you Mm. know, and that he believed Mm. in Jesus. So, amen. Yeah. Yeah, man, shout out to man, shout your wife out, man. <laughs> My baby Nicole, yeah, <laughs> I know she gonna be watching it. I know she gonna be watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, man. That's powerful, man. Man, look. I carry, call it contraband. That's why I'm staying, kingdom minded, war and promised land. Putting treasures in the heaven, filling haunted grand. When the waters get choppy, I'm walking through the sand. Praying for the Father, carry me to promised land. Holy roll the Bible open, keep the devil home. Notice that the Father in the driver's seat. Right beside him, Holy Ghost, and evil purpose with the focus, cause the spirit all in me. I won't deny that I'm a Christian bride. In the fire, I need repentance, man. As we move into this next segue, bro, man, let's talk about some music, man. Let's get into it. What yeah. inspired the high energy vibe and positive message of flexing? Uh, what inspired it was all right, so I got this song called Never Alone, and um. Zay Hill had hit me up on the strength of that song. He said that he heard that song and he was like, man, I, uh, I'm i trying to help other, you know, uh, artists that, you know, to, to, you know, much love to Zay Hill. He had hit me up and mm-hmm. said, I'm trying to help other artists, you know, get heard in this, in this, um, you know, in this genre, you know? And so I was like, okay, bet. Now I'm, I'm going to be all the way true. I don't listen to a lot of Zay Hill. I really don't. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, but I knew who he was and I appreciated the opportunity from him. And so uh, I started listening to, you know, more and more of his songs. And I was like, I don't want to make a song that sound like this. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, me and uh, my, my my dude, Young Tito, we had got together to make the beat. And I was like, I, I don't want like the melody driven type of mm-hmm beat I, I want something more more hyped up and so then my dude Dirk he got into he got into it in, in here with us also and and it was just it was just the beat man and it was just I wanted to present uh something a a little different um with Zay Hill on it then maybe then maybe like you know I felt like you know he he does so um you know, yeah, man, the beat and just that's the type of stuff that I felt like, you know, I could present with him on, on the track. 
And um, mm-hmm. I just let, I just, you know, I just was praying and that's where God led me, man. That's where God led me. Just, you know, make it, make it something boastful. But, you mm-hmm. know, when we boast, we boast in Christ. And then it mm-hmm. just, and it just took off from there where the whole song was really about Jesus and what he did more than what we do, you know? Yes, and, sir. Yeah, and that was, and that's, and that's the flex. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that track. I put that track on, and I call Zay like the the hitman of features in Christian <laughs> hip hop, right? That, yeah. but it's good to hear that he reached out too, because now I know something about him too. That that he heard something from you and reached out to you as well. So the collaboration with Zay Hill, right, highlights the power of unity in the body of Christ. How important is collaborations to you in the Christian hip hop community? Well, I don't know too many people in the Christian hip hop community, but the power of collaborating with um, the people that um, God has uh, placed in front of me to even do this has mm-hmm. been has been really moving, really been powerful. Because I, I tell you, you know, as far as with me and, and being a, a Christian rapper doing music again, I, I really didn't want to, you know, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I I was, uh, my pastor had, uh, had uh, did a message about praying for purpose in the kingdom. And so, you know, I started praying for purpose in the kingdom. And uh, one opportunity happened to hop on the song, uh, you know, as far as talking about collaborating, you know, this young cat. In my church, he wanted me to hop on this beat with him. I did not like the beat, but I got love for him and his parents, so I hopped on. I hopped on the beat with him. Then mm. he introduces me to Tito, who you're gonna hear a lot of two turn Titos. You know, if you listen to my music, <laughs> that's right. That's you're gonna right. hear a lot of. You're gonna 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 hear a lot of two turn Titos because. <laughs> Young Tito, man, you know, um, he got introduced to me as far as collaborating. He just he just popped up and he just started coming over my house and just started making beats and throwing me beats. And so then I needed a singer. And so I went to I went to a brother in my church. I, you know, mm-hmm. I went to a brother in my church that I thought had a good voice, Kiko. Mm-hmm. And uh you know, now me and Kiko, we got like five songs together. And so mm-hmm. as far as collaborating, I just I just look at it like, you know, all of us are just all of us are, are tools are and using the tools that the Lord places in front of us. So I never look at any of this that I'm doing with music as this is just my tool and I got to wait to to, you know, for this song to blow up or you know people need to get to know me or I had this one brother be like uh, you know you could do a collaboration with somebody but they don't have a, a strong following I don't care about that honestly mm-hmm. if, if they if they if what they doing sounds good first off Cause everybody, mm-hmm. everybody stuff ain't sounding good. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> yeah, everybody stuff ain't sounding good. Some of us do. Some of us do do need to stop. Okay, let's mm-hmm. just we'll get into that later. But as far as collaborating though, um, if it sound good and and you and it's on your heart and it's from the Lord that you know this is truly. Um, his will and what and what he wants you to do, then yeah, hop on there, man. You know, <clears throat> don't make it about money. Don't make it about following. Make it about you know proclaiming him and and doing his will. You know, so that's where I'm at with collaborating, for real. Amen, amen, man. In the in the song flexing to it seemed like it had a strong theme, like you mentioned doing everything for his glory. How do you keep this focus in the face of music, in the face of the music industry, in the challenges and the temptations that come with that? What you what you mean? Kind of like what you mean? Sort of like how do you keep it 
All right, we're just going to talk. How you keep it Gucci with the Lord, right? Because the world, like even in Christian hip-hop, right, the challenges of the music industry with the screaming and this and that, you mm. can easily say, you know what, I'm going to make a secular song mm. and get this money and get it popping, and mm. then I'm going to come back. And a lot of people that say they do that, they don't even come back to the genre, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about with the challenges and the temptations of being a Christian hip hop artists and in this song it seemed like your main focus period in your music period is for his glory yeah well you know for me that's the only reason I'm doing music is because the Lord like I said I pray for purpose and this is the purpose that the Lord presented me with so you know for me it's like you know how dare I try to stray away from you know what from 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 God, from the man, from the king, from from my savior who's allowing me to do this, you know? Mm. And um <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, you know, uh for me to be for me to for me to know the gospel, believe the gospel, and want to be obedient to the gospel. When I say the gospel, I mean his word. Mm-hmm. That right there is the blessing. That right there, for me, you know, and I can say for my wife also, for us to to know it, believe it, and 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 we and try to live it, be obedient as best as we can. That's the honor, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you know, for me, with doing music, um, it's never it's never a thing of you know. I want to give you my old man so I can make so I can make some money. I don't want to re- I don't want to be recognized with with the world, you know. Now, if my music can can recognize with somebody who's who's in the world, and you know, one foot in, one foot out, are you jumping back and forth? Are you having that tug of war? You know, mm. you know what I'm saying. And now, if it recognizes with you, and you can hear and you can hear me proclaiming God and where and where He's brought me. That amen, you did. But as far mm-hmm. as as far as me personally, I'm not doing music to to be recognized with the world, and I'm not doing music for for personal gain. I'm doing music out of obedience and out of the honor and the glory and straight up pleasure, of even believing all the way, believing what I'm spitting to you. You know. Mm-hmm. Knowing that what I'm spitting to you, I straight up pray and talk to the Lord. Like, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Because I really don't, I really don't even know what more to put to make a full verse. Sometimes, mm. sometimes I literally got to put it down and and just pray, and then co- and then when I come back to it, it's like I I'm catching. You know, this bar, that bar, that bar, when it's all, when it's recorded, you know, and I'm just, and I'd be, and I'd be amazed at it, like real talk, like, like, um, like that bar inflection where I say, uh, um, keep me good on every block, God, God, and keep them blocked. I say that, (laughs) you know, the truth of the matter is, it's like, I just realized, like when I said that, you know, I just realized that, um, when I mean keep me good, I'm not just talking about protection. When I'm on, when I'm on whatever block, I'm talking about you know, I'm not I'm not doing those things that 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 I used to do on the block, you know, mm. you know, from you know trying to hustle or you know sitting out there getting high with everybody, drinking with everybody, you know, um, maybe even just cussing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, you know, maybe even something like that, and so. When I wrote that, I meant it. I meant it in a way of God. You know, I said the spirit drop, uh, like the beat, the spirit drop. Keep me good on every block. God got it. Keep him locked. So you know that's mm-hmm. you know stuff like that right there. You know, for me and where the Lord has me is way better than trying to rap about you know hustling or um mm-hmm. you know making some money or you know mm-hmm. uh, or, or or you know. Or the murder, kill, kill. Yeah, or my sexual, sexual mm-hmm. versions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, that right there. That's that's way better. 
because you know yes sir so so that's that's how i you know i hope that answered the question you know? oh no nah, you answered it well it's edifying and that's what i like right and that's what i i no, nah, that's another topic. I'm gonna keep it to myself. <laughs> but I'm gonna say this. No, nah, I'm gonna <laughs> say it out loud. I, I feel like sometimes that's what Christian hip hop missing, right? Um, mm. The conviction mm-hmm. to remember why you started, and not just Christian hip hop. Our earlier conversation about church members of the body. Period. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel like once we get seasoned and mature in the faith we forget what it was like when we first came into the faith, that fire. Yeah. But we wanted to preach to the world. Yeah. We wanted to save anybody and tell them everything about Jesus. Right. So when I listen to your music, it reminds me of that fire that, that I had coming into the faith. And I hope it reminds others that listen as well. And speaking of your music in Big Stepping, you convey a message of inclusion, indicating that everyone, including unbelievers and new believers, can be transformed by God. Mm-hmm. How do you hope this song influences those on the fringes of faith? Yeah, I just, I mean, I just hope really that people see that that I'm right there with you, you know. I'm a maybe, maybe like uh like, like my homeboy Greg. You know, told me, um, I'm just, I'm just one page ahead of you. That's it. That's all. Mm. You know, that's it. I'm just, mm. and when I say one page, I'm talking about God's word. So I'm not, mm. I'm not, you know, way over here like super Christian or nothing like that. So I really hope that people can hear that song and hear a lot of my music and 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 hear that, you know, that in and out that tug of war that, that I, you know, how I described it, um, you know, that it's normal, that it's normal, that, that God, that I, I feel like, you know, God sends us through that. And, uh, like my cousin Curtis, what's up, Curtis? I know he probably checked this out too. What's up, Kurt, dog? But, um, you know, like my cousin Curtis told, told me, um, sometimes we get the devil way too much credit because mm. I can't, you know, I kept on, I kept on saying, man, the devil doing, I think the devil doing this. I think the devil trying to pull me back. I think the devil this. And so he stopped me. He was like, sometimes we get a devil too much. He was like, you get a devil too much credit. He was like, the devil is only going to do what God uh, allows him to do. And so he was like, is this, is this his playground? Yes, this is his playground. But sometimes he was like, Mike, sometimes the Lord is just testing you to show you that he has pulled you from those same weaknesses that he has brought you to a a place of where you can rely on his strength and not your own and so and so with big stepping i was really trying to convey that those things you know my dog be tripping sometimes. <laughs> but he, no, it's all you good. Know, no, Bob, you, 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 but he protected. Now, hold on, give me a second. He protected. Uh, Back to uh, Big Stepping. It's just, I was just really trying to convey, in that song, I was just really trying to convey just um, the best that I could. Just me and just where, you know, the things that I did and how and, um, and where God plays a, a huge part and um, and where I am now, and uh, a lot of my a lot of my music, a whole lot of my music is like that, you know. A whole mm-hmm. lot of it is. And then at the end of the song, <clears throat> at the end of the song, at the very end of the song, um, where I was like, uh, "Why you think we need save God's wrath on Judgment Day?" You know, that was like a testament to like Curtis and some other some other teachings that I've learned. Where it's like, you know, a lot of times we think that, you know, we need to be saved from the devil. And uh, truly, it's like, you know, if you think about it, you know, God's wrath during the, you know, during the end of days, you know, that's because right now we have his love, you know. Um, I wish I could remember everything from this teaching, but like this man was saying right now, we have his love, we have his mercy, we have his forgiveness, you know. But, you know, that time is going to come. 
to where we see, you know, his full wrath. And um mm-hmm. and that's what we need saved from because even even the devil, even the enemy and all of his demons, even they gonna get his full wrath, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You know, that's why I ended the song like that right there, you know, try to just remember. It's not always the mm-hmm. devil that um, we need to look at, you know, we need to look at God and, and all of him, you know, so, yeah. Man, look here, Justin Mike, I'm going to tell you something. What up? Just something I'm seeing, right? Listen, you done dropped so many gems and so many sermons going off in my mind in this one <laughs> podcast. You have you ever had the conviction of maybe stepping forward in the ministry and preaching? Uh, no, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't say that I have, man. I, I, mm-hmm. I've, I've, um, I'll be all the way trill with you. I've wondered it. And maybe that's mm-hmm. where God, but you know, I'm still, I'm still so new in my faith. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I mean, that's you right. know, uh, and yeah, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that because you know, I, mm-hmm. I feel like the Lord is letting me know, like, yeah, you know, speak up on that. I'm still, I'm still, me and my wife are still kind of new in our faith, you know, mm-hmm. like really trying to be obedient. So as far as like being a minister, I can't, I can't think that far ahead, you know, um, mm-hmm. not right now anyway, um, mm-hmm. but. Everything that you know, I'm saying, is is what the Lord has you know pre- presented to me, and things that I've I've had to deal with personally from Him, and from mm-hmm. you know different people that you know He's placed in front of me that that give me good teaching, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, nah. As far as like ministering and stuff, nah. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, you 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 are ministering, and you're ministering through your music and through the prison ministry and stuff like that. I just, you've actually made me think of some things that people. You can be as educated as you want. It doesn't matter. You will still be marginalized if they recognize you as having been with Jesus. If they recognize you as a Christ follower. I won't deny I'm a Christian rider. Won't you come and pray with me? Got the Father with me in the driver's seat. While I'm riding shotgun, feel me too. Two turns, Tito. Let's go. Holy roller, Bible open. Get the devil home. Notice that the Father in the driver's seat. And where you at? I'm a cook in the fire. I need repentance, man. Made me think of some things that. And we was talking earlier about Ishan's album, For the Love of Money, and that interlude he has on there when he was talking about when the devil tempted Jesus and he pulled the scriptures out of Deuteronomy and he said that the devil fled. And when he come back, guess what he going to have? Some more scriptures for the Mm -hmm. devil, right? Mm -hmm. So with you just making that statement, about big stepping about and your cousin and how you roll that out for us and it made me think like yeah that's what I need to be afraid of fear the Lord mm-hmm. the big comeback mm-hmm. not the devil the devil don't have no say that word of God do though mm-hmm. you know so and like I tell everybody I'm you know I'm gonna be one of the ones behind them I don't plan to be in front of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks, man. I yes, tell you, look, I tell you something most powerful. Uh, something else that was, uh, was real powerful that I, I, I peeped while while reading. Um, you know, in the New Testament, man. Um, because the Lord has me in the New Testament, you know, a whole a whole mm-hmm. lot now. Because I I think it's mm-hmm. because I, I I focused so much on the Old Testament in the beginning mm-hmm. and had no idea what I was really doing. But anyway, mm-hmm. so in the New Testament, man, if, if you if you check it out, anytime there's a there's a um, Jesus shows up, there's you know or you know uh, an angel shows up, the people are always afraid. Right, mm. so think mm-hmm. about it. So I give you examples. So uh, when Jesus uh, healed the the took the legions out of the man, and uh, mm-hmm. you know when he took the legion out of the man and he was healed, 
when the people showed up, they were so afraid of that miracle. Jesus had to leave because because mm-hmm. because they were afraid. When Jesus is walking on water, what does he tell the disciples? Do not be. Mm-hmm. They were scared. You remember? Say they trembled. Mm-hmm. They were scared. He had to tell them, "Do not be afraid." You know, it is mm-hmm. me. Um, when Jesus, you know, when the angel was sitting on top of the rock, uh, you know, on top of his tomb. The, the guards they fainted uh, what else mm-hmm. I mean it's all throughout the New mm-hmm. Testament and so mm-hmm. I guess the point for me that I feel like the Lord made for me and I've shared this with a couple people and some people nobody ever really has any comment for it but you know the thing that, that hit me about it is like you know um, the, the experiences I didn't have with the Lord like I ain't gonna lie I'd be kind of scared know because mm. you know it's mm. not it's not normal i i know i know it's yeah it's joyous but you mm-hmm. know it's it's them times where it'd be like oh dang is that really you um mm-hmm. and so i just feel like you know the lord was showing me like that's normal his presence is 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 going to put that fear or that awe in us and mm-hmm. uh there's even a there's even this this pastor that got a whole sermon in in a book about it, you know, and uh, I actually found that I I found that sermon in that book later on after I had this, but you know, um, yeah, man. So we was talking about God's wrath and um, the fear from His wrath, but if we could see all throughout the New Testament, just His presence and just the presence of His angels. You know, we put fear into the disciples. It put fear into the people around them. Not a, not the same type of worldly fear that that we have, mm-hmm. you know, towards demons or towards spiders or towards dogs or nothing like that. But it's a fear or it's a awe. A awe it's a um. How did this one? Somebody said it's reverence. That's what somebody mm-hmm. somebody told me one time. It's it's, it's reverence. That's you know that that you might be seeing the feeling. So you know. Yeah. Nah, I like that though, cause that's a fear that I think everybody needs to be honest with you, to be able to move forward and be able to walk with the Lord, to be able to go, to be able to know when not to go, what to do, what not to do. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's the awe, mm-hmm. the awe of the Lord in the presence of the Lord. So that's good, man. And while you know, while we're talking about old testament, new testament, let's talk about sunrise. The song Sunrise emerged from a period of prayer and seeking clarity about the complexities in Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. Can you share more about how this deep dive in the scripture influenced your creative process for the song? Yeah. Um, so it was a time period where all I kept hearing was Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, you know. Deuteronomy, it was, and I mean, I'm pretty sure you then had that that, that experience <laughs> too. Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites, yeah, them brothers, you know, <laughs> them Hebrew Israelite brothers, and you know, and that's all I. But you know, that's, it seemed like that's all I kept hearing. And so, um, after prayer, you know, it looking at looking at them scriptures, it was just like it just. I felt like it just hit me like. I'm not defined by a curse, you know, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Jesus took all the curses to the cross with him, right? Amen. <laughs> so, with that being, you know, and this is this is truly what I experienced, you know. So, uh, from you know, from the Lord, this I didn't make this up. This uh, I'm I'm not this intelligent. That's something. I'm not this intelligent. <laughs> So um, it was just like, you know, with, with the song Sunrise, you know, that experience of realizing that I'm not defined by those curses, that we as a people aren't defined by those curses in Deuteronomy. We mm-hmm. are defined by the risen son, the risen son, his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we identify with 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 those? Can we identify uh, traits and character characteristics within this world from those curses? Yes, 
but never are we to identify, never am I, never am I, and I think you too, brother, and I think a lot of, That's right. a lot of us, never are we to look in the Bible at curses and, and identify ourselves with them. When we when we all should be trying our best to identify with Jesus, Amen. And so, and so um, yeah, I just went through that period where it was like everything being rolled out to me as a black man was curses, and it was like you know all these laws that you know of 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 what I can't do. And, mm-hmm. and why I can't do it and it's because you a black man and and, and everything like that so you know I, I ain't I ain't uh, get hateful or get prideful or, or nothing like that so I seek the Lord and uh, mm-hmm. you know that's where that's literally where the Lord brought me you know because mm-hmm. I mean it, it was setting a lot of doubt in my mind and that's something that I would say to them to any Hebrew, any Hebrew Israelites, you know, you can see, you can see why Jesus, you know, have those eight rebukes that he has, you know, where he says, woe to you, you know, mm-hmm. to the Pharisees and, 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 uh, the restraints that they put on people and that they don't even live by. You can see, she clear as day, that same spirit, you know, and, um, and as where as like, I would search the Bible to try to find where they was wrong really what it was doing was it was it was edifying me and it was bringing me it was bringing me to a place of, of peace because i was mm-hmm. sp- i was spending so much time with the lord even even while i'm spending time with him to try to find where somebody's wrong but you know what i'm spending time with him so mm-hmm. you know and uh that's happened that's happened a few times where you know i started looking in scripture to 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 prove somebody wrong or to see what somebody's talking about. But, you know, I'm sitting down with the Lord and I'm in his words, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. and a lot of revelations, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of revelations get put into me like that a lot out of God's word, out of, out of combing the scriptures. So to, so to mm-hmm. get back to sunrise, that's, that's how it started. Um, you know, and I try to, um, convey that within the verses and uh in the in the course in the course is so much now mm-hmm. you um i did give a little bit of credit to the hebrew israelites with the mm-hmm. uh and i mean no 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 um uh, no condemnation on anybody but mm-hmm. you know just you know with um with the practices of of uh you know these holidays and stuff, you know, that that is something that you know mm-hmm. that I do agree with them on. You know, mm-hmm. it is a and you know I'm not trying to bash Hebrew Israelites, but I do think that a lot of their doctrine is is is, is false. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. and it's and it's clothed in uh in the same racial tension that that kept white people, you know, looking mm-hmm. to keep black people down. No, mm-hmm. and I think it's the same spirit. So real talk. Mm-hmm. So, right. I think, but I do think I do. Let me, I will say this: I do think what some of them brothers is laying out is true. But you know, even the devil, and I, I'm not calling no Hebrew Israelite the devil. I'm just mm-hmm. saying we have examples in God's word where even the de- even the devil uses the truth to try mm-hmm. to, you know, um. To try to get what he kill, wants. steal, and destroy. Oh, that right there, that right there. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's uh, that's sunrise. That's what that's yes, what sir. inspires sunrise. Yeah, and 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 I'm gonna say this because I'm a black man in America, so I get exactly what you're saying. And this is not to condemn the Hebrew Israelites. It's just that's what led me to Deuteronomy 28 and to really slow down and look at it one day, right? Right. Because, yeah, I can identify as being a black man in America, but my identification is supposed to be in Christ now. I also can identify that some of the slave owners and slave masters Mm -hmm. used the Bible and took certain parts out of the Bible about slavery 
and everything like that to control the situation that they had mm-hmm. us in 400 years plus. I'm cool with that as well. Yeah. But I also know that reading Deuteronomy 28, we love to talk about the curses, but we don't love to talk about what got the people to the curses. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, and then when you move forward and you move into the New Testament, like you were talking about the curses, why we focus on the curses when God took the curses, when he took the beatings, when he carried the cross, when he died on the cross, when he rose on the third day. Mm-hmm. We so busy talking about the curses. Mm-hmm. We not talking about the blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The big lamb, the yeah. sacrificial lamb, you yeah. know, so that's what, you know, I don't claim to be the smartest as well, but you can call me a dummy in the world. Just call me strong by faith though. Right. Right. I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to remember that. But that's exactly, yes, sir. that's exactly what I mean, man. I, I had that same revelation to it. I, and, my, <laughs> and my wife, she kept pointing it out to me. And I and I kept ignoring her because, you know, I'm looking at her like, you just don't want me listening to other black folks. Because, you know, like I told <laughs> you, my wife is white. So it was causing that mm-hmm. tension. And this was before we was married, too, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was causing that tension w- within us. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, um, it, I I kept, I was focusing on them curses so much that I totally was missing Jesus. And, mm. and I was totally missing, missing all of that. I was so focused on the curses and, and, and what it meant to a black, uh, to a black man in America. And, and I, I totally miss Jesus. By the time Jesus got caught up, it was, I mean, I'm not bullcrapping. It was 30 of them brothers telling me that the uh, the apostles were liars and you can't believe the apostles. But then they would go to certain parts of Roman and be like, see, see, see what he said right here. That's how you know. But it's like, yo, did you tell me he was a liar? So, mm this one scripture he's not this one verse he's not lying in but I shouldn't believe (laughs) anything like you know just things Mm -hmm. weren't adding up you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. so I I feel you bro I feel you yeah but you did the work you searched for it I thank God for your help mate your wife as well and you know and where you're at now so man as we move forward too man talking about Christian rap we talked about your music and and things like that matter of fact before we move on, give me a song, one of your favorite releases so far. Man, uh, what's next for me? That's that's my that's and I mean maybe I love this song because a you know Kiko, you know mm. I, I oh really, he slammed that one. I know right, <laughs> I know Kiko. I mean Kiko man, uh, it is the beautiful thing with Kiko is it's like I'll be like yo man I. I got this hook. I want to put you on it, and then um, he, and then he'll take the song and he'll he'll work with it a little bit, and then he'll hit me up and he'd be like, "I might have kind of wrote something to it." And he'd be like, "If you want to put it on there, like if you do." And so then, and so then when I get him in the studio, uh, I hear what he wrote, and I'll be like, "Man, why are you always trying to make me look bad?" You know what I'm saying? Because you know he, I think, I think. You know, and that's what she was talking about collaborating. You know, Kiko, like Kiko was his some brother that I, I never knew until I started going to this church. And, you know, probably never, we probably never would have talked before. But, you know, God and, you know, brought us together musically, you know. So, but as far as what's next for me, um, it's just, it's just a really personal, really, really real song it's uh one of them songs that while i was writing it you know i was kind of tearing up some because you know mm. I, I tell her i tell her in the first verse i tell a whole lot you know mm-hmm. i don't win or or should i say the holy spirit showed a whole lot of um of uh my weakness things that i didn't want to reveal to to nobody and uh here it is because of him i have the strength to to, to reveal it to everybody who wants to listen and um 
and then just to end it off, you know, of course, back to Jesus, you know, and um, mm-hmm. and so then, you know, how Kiko and what he wrote, uh, they praying on my downfall, and um, it's like David and Goliath, um, and everything. I think Kiko really, without him even knowing that he did this, he really captured uh, how I feel in this in this Christian rapper space, you know, because I mm. feel that a, a lot of people don't want to see me doing this. A lot of people are, are are avoiding me. A lot of people are, it seems like, don't want to, like, show me any type of love. And, I mean, to the point to where now it's like, you know, I just look at it like, well, you know, they're not, they ain't making fun of me. Or if they are, they don't have the heart to put it on social media, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, um, yeah, man, just just how that song came together and just Kiko what he what he contributed to it and just it just really resonates like with everything so and I think I think that it resonates for a lot of people I think a lot uh, I've had a few people hit me up and just say man those lyrics is 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 for real and you know I've had a few people hit me up and talk about the lyrics in that song and how it really just hit hit them so uh yeah, what's next for me? Definitely. If you ain't heard that, you need to go listen to it straight up. Yeah, I second that. I second that. I love that song, man. And speaking about speaking about what's next before we close out, man. Yeah. What's next for you as an artist? As tour dates, new releases, whatever's yeah. next, man. Let fill us in. Man, I'm excited to, to cause uh what's next is uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, man, is uh my next single that's called Holy Roller Ambitions. And um mm. yeah, Holy Roller Ambitions. Mm. And I'm I'm real excited to get that song released. We're gonna have a, a a full video for that song. Um and so that's that's the next single to drop. That and it'll probably drop uh, somewhere in the middle of April. I mean, I I could put it out now, but you know, <laughs> now now it just seems like God has put people in front of me to help me do a little bit more. So mm-hmm. we're gonna do a little bit more for this song. So uh, Holy Roller Ambitions, that'll be the next single, and then um, the album uh, will be coming out this year within a couple of months. You say you got your book coming out in July. I'll have mm-hmm. my album coming out probably right before your book, dog. So, I'll bet. yeah, man. So, uh, I, I, I'm swaying back and forth on titles of the album, but there will be an album. My first album this year, like first album ever will be this year in a few months. Um, and then I got some other songs, uh, that's going to come out behind that. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah. So that's what's Mm. next. Just, just more music is going to drop. So, you know, I hope, hope y'all is tuned in with me on my social medias to, to know when they drop. And I'm not something I'm not charging for any of this. I'm not mm-hmm. I don't even have to make a contribution to the artists on my Spotify, you know. Mm-hmm. The Lord the Lord has blessed me to um with, with all of these lyrics, with all of the people around me. Dirk, thank you, Dirk, if you're watching this, thank you, Tito, thank you, Hannah, thank you, Kiko, thank you, Zay Hill, everybody, Q, thank you, Q. Uh, I got a song with him that's going to drop this year, but um, everybody that's just been around me to help me um, be able to do this purpose from from the Lord, I really appreciate y'all, and yeah, y'all, just more music, dog, a lot of music this year, it's going to hit a lot. And that's what I'm talking about, so Holy Roller Ambitions. Yeah. I, I like the title already. Yeah. Wait the till video... You- uh-huh. All right. I was gonna and say then, wait. I was gonna say wait, 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 wait till you hear the chorus. Wait till you hear the chorus. <laughs> For real. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. Man, you know, look, I don't share, so you know you can always hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you can always hit me up, man. I got so many artists hit me up and just 
ask yeah. me what I think or hit me with it. Okay. Oh, man, I've been sitting on albums for a year one time. But uh, but Dang. yeah, you can uh, always hit me up. And here go a short plug. You know, we do behind the mic too. So when the album drop, yeah. now in July, I'll be in San Antonio, the beginning of San Antonio, but uh, beginning of July rather. But when I come home uh, from my childhood home, then we can sit down and chop it up about the album too because what I okay so is it a full album or is it an EP or is it a full album? Man, it's probably gonna be a full album. It's probably gonna be about nine to ten songs. Okay, good. You know, it's gonna be it's it's a full album, bro. Like okay, it, it blows it when I it blows me and my wife's dirt. My, my Dirk is my engineer, but you know, the okay. Lord, he's been with me on this journey for, uh, but it just blows our mind how much music, you know, we have been making, you know? So it's probably, and I feel, and I feel like that's what's in line with God is, is a full album. I keep dropping singles and from the very mm-hmm. get go, it was always this whole body of, of, of music that the Lord you know, bless, bless, bless me with, and gave me the mm-hmm. confidence to put out there. So it's gonna be an album, and then probably an EP. Honestly, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. Because I love to sit down with with albums, man. I'm old school, so I love it. Right. Um, so man, look, where tell the family where they can find your music, man. Oh uh, yeah, you can find you can find my music on any Spotify under Just Mike. The same way it's spelled right here, J U S T M I C. Spotify, Apple, Pandora, YouTube, uh, YouTube Music, Deezer, whatever that is. I mean, you could find my, you should, you could find my music in any and everywhere on Instagram, any and everywhere, anywhere. So just yes, sir. put in Just Mike. J U S T M I C on YouTube. You put in just Mike J U S T M I C two one six, and that that gets you to my YouTube page. Yeah, yes sir, yes sir. And let the family know, man, where where they can find you at. All your your on the social media, even though we have it linked in the show notes. Let yeah. us know. Yeah, Instagram is uh like I said, just Mike. J-U-S-T-M-I-C no space no space through any of this 216 so that's Instagram uh, Twitter X uh, TikTok which I don't don't be on TikTok a whole lot honestly but Instagram really and uh, Facebook is just Mike Tabs J-U-S-T-M-I-C T-A-B-B-S on Facebook, and uh, you know, you can um, send me a friend request. I'm still doing it that way on Facebook, <laughs> but <laughs> better, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, man. So, but Instagram is the best way. It's the best way, and uh, Twitter, and uh, yeah, TikTok. And I'll try to get better with that in the future. Is just you know. I stayed off of social media for so long, you know. I'm still still learning mm-hmm. the ins and outs of it and everything. So yeah. Sound like me. We got a a program we pay that just send all the artist stuff out, man. I can't stand social media. Man, but man. I know you got to be on it to do ministry. So I just ask the Lord to keep me strong while I'm on there. Man, bro, let me Sometimes, sometimes it's cool, and sometimes it's 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 like you know why why am I on here? You know, like um, mm-hmm. you know, like with the streaming, you know, it, streaming is dope because it gets our message out there to you know, like like Big Stepping is almost at a thousand streams. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. flexing is almost at a thousand streams. So that's a thousand people that's heard me, you know, rap about Jesus and proclaim him. But I ain't met probably not 
that, you know, none of them. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you remember back in the day, we used to just want to pass out 100 CDs. If you could just mm-hmm. pass out 50 CDs. Mm-hmm. But that brought you in contact with 50 people. That mm-hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? That was face to face with you. And so, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of miss that flow right there, you know? Like, you know, back in the day, passing out mixtapes, you did. So, you know, uh, streaming is good for the Lord, but, you know, community, com- building a community, is, is, is a little, it's, 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 it's kind of sucks, you know? Social media, yes, is, social media the same way, kind of, kind of sucks mm. community wise, you know? So, yes, sir. I look at social media. I'll drop this before we leave. I look at social media like the mega church. Okay. You could be in the mega church and they don't even know you there. I like that. I like that. Heck yeah. You know, so it is community, man. So we need to work. We need to do better to build this community too and build the body, man. Yeah. So, you know, we do. Man, just Mike, man, before we get out of here, man, is there anything left that you want to say? Um. Yeah, honestly, what's what I really want to say? This is your boy, Mr. S to the P, aka Sam Purpose. Listen, I'm dropping a new single April the fifth called "God in Carolina." Featuring my man, the legendary K.O. Bracey. It's about our love for Jesus in our home state that we were born and raised in of North Carolina. You can find more information about this song on TBK247.com. Anything left? that you want to say um yeah honestly what's what i really want to say man is uh all of us ain't called to rap that's really what i want to say all of us ain't called to rap man you know all of us might feel that you know we make we make good music proclaiming god but is it good music you know Mm -hmm. um Christian hip hop is definitely seems like maybe just because I'm in it really heavy now, or you know, because I'm in, in on this side of it. But Christian hip hop is definitely at a space that's really uh, reminiscent to the early 2000s when everybody was trying to rap, and some mm. of it was garbage. Mm. Just, and that's just the truth. Some of it be was real with it. Yeah, some of it was garbage. And Christian hip hop is definitely in that space right now where everybody is trying to do it. But why are you doing it? And really, should you be doing it? You know? And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to leave like this, you know, to the guys that are doing it and, you know, you know why you're doing it and you know for sure that you're in line with God with doing it uh, I had the strong revelation from the Lord Luke 10 Luke chapter 10 verse 20 he says um, do not rejoice because the subjects are because uh, the spirits are subject to you in my name rejoice that your name is written in heaven so mm. while, while we are doing this purpose, make sure that you are happy with just doing the purpose. It's not about the likes. If you if you if you can make a little a little bit of money with it, if that's what you need to do, then the Lord is going the Lord is your increase. He's gonna give you that. But it ain't about the likes. It's not about your streaming numbers. It's not about you know how much how many people is listening to you. It, it really is about just you know. Uh, proclaiming him and making sure that you uh, that 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 you happy with the purpose, that you happy with the purpose from him, and so yeah, that's really what's been on my heart, real heavy. So that's how I want to leave it. Amen, amen. And I piggyback that just a little bit with two things before I close out. One is this: I write books, started this blog post, write blogs. Because I can't rap. 
<laughs> I like <laughs> rap, but I can't rap. So you're not nailing anybody when you say that. There's plenty of stuff for the body that can do to help Christian hip hop, to help Christian rap, to help your minister, to be a promoter, to be somebody that can get the venues, to be able to write a blog, to be able to write a book, to be able to do an interview, a podcast, whatever your gift is for the king. That's not you putting somebody on death row and hitting the switch. That just saying that your gift may not be rapping. Yes, yes. And man, you you, know. you you said some some of these some of y'all some of these cats y'all have all the resources to help another brother, and it don't have to be me, and it don't have to be whoever. Some of y'all have the resources, like this brother here. He has the resources to do this podcast but he ain't doing it all about him so i say that some of y'all rappers have the resources to help other people get out the word of god with their talent you don't have to be on the bill nobody your face uh, your name don't have to be attached to it to proclaim god you know so I'm seeing a lot of that too that's like from back in the day where cats would only promote something because their name was on it. Nah, man, this ain't even about our names. This is about mm-hmm. the, this is about Jesus, the one name, the one savior. So, you know, it's not about you. It's not about making sure that you heard and you seen. It's not even about the talent being heard and seen. It's about God being seen, man. So, yeah. I feel it. Amen. Amen. And the second thing I want to say is just to speak to the streaming. And I'm glad you're not caught up in the streams and the views and the likes and the things like that. But I love to add this, especially to people that I mean that I like and I like their music. So the church doesn't just operate off of hallelujahs and amens. When the power bill comes around, Them power folks, you can go up to them and say, hallelujah, you might get a pass on your power bill, but nine out of 10 times, they're going to cut the lights off. So when you see these artists out here, man, support them with more than just streaming. I know just Mike getting in it for the, for the money, but I know some could help to make the next project that you may like or hear or edify somebody. So, uh, Man, I was gonna drop a bar, but I'm gonna leave it. But I'm gonna say this: drop, don't, bro. don't, 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 don't. <laughs> nah, I'm a, you know, it's man, y'all laborers of the faith is what I'm trying to say, man. And we need you all out here pressing the word, getting it to the youth, getting it to these old heads like me, getting it to somebody that need to hear the message being changed, and that even go to the person, the older saint that's holding on to all rap is demonized. All rap's not demonized. It just, you had your songs and your scriptures and these young people, they have rap music. The message is still the same, but it's just being delivered different. So if you could get out here and help people, these brothers and sisters and people with their craft and support them, do that. And we'll have links in our description where you could help too as well. And and that's what I wanted to add, man. My two points, man. Yeah. Nah, I definitely yes, sir. totally agree with you a hundred percent. And yeah, uh a lot a lot of brothers like me that's coming to Christ now, um, we need we need Christian hip hop, you know, because I'm you know, we really do. Cause you know, I, I know when I when me and my wife, you know, that's something that the Lord wanted us to remove, uh, you know, from from our lifestyle was what we was listening to back then. The Christian hip hop filled that void. So anybody who thinks that this genre is uh, full of demons, they don't they don't know how it's blessing people like me, blessing people like my wife, blessing people like my sister who's starting to build her faith now. So you know, no, nah, we need mm-hmm. we need Christian hip hop straight up, good Christian hip hop. Good to Christian hip hop. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, just Mike, man, I want to, man, listen, I just want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank you. It's, uh, I love the way you shared your testimony, your ministry, your heart. 
man, that we need more, more brothers in the faith out there carrying that cross like you doing. And man, you can stop by any time. Man, thank you, bro. I definitely will stop by more. Real talk. Thank you. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it's been an amazing conversation with the multi-talented, inspiring Just Mike. Before we say goodbye, make sure to follow Just Mike on his social media accounts to stay updated on his latest projects and upcoming events. You can also check out Just Mike Music in our space on all streaming platforms. Also, be sure for future projects to pre-save the projects from the artist to show your support and help boost its visibility in the industry. Last but not least, don't forget to check out the show notes for the links and more information. Thank you for tuning in to the Bookkeeper 247 podcast, and we'll catch you on the next time. (laughs) Peace. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, sir.